Hey guys, welcome back to the Law Doc Project 365, episode 49. Today we're talking more shin splints. The other day we went into the primarily the anterior compartment, specifically tibialis anterior. That was the type of shin splint that that, that young gentleman had. But today we're going to move back to the posterior compartment. It's the more common area to get shin splints. They actually call it medial tibial stress syndrome. And primarily or specifically, we're going to speak about uh, the muscle that we call the posterior tibialis. I know you guys all love my socks. That's fine. Um, so the posterior tibialis is a muscle that connects kind of in the, the back here. You have two major bones, right? You have the big one, the tibia, and on the other side, you have the littler one, the fibula. And that tibialis posterior muscle connects kind of deep in between on the back side here, courses down the inside of this shin, so we have our shin bone that's right here, falls behind this knob here that we call lateral or medial malleolus and kind of connects underneath into the bottom arch of the foot. What it does is it plantar flexes or pushes the toe down and inverts the foot, okay? It's a muscle that gets beat up really bad in CrossFit activities because of all the excessive jumping, so we have this excessive amount of forceful flexion downwards, and more importantly, what actually hurts it even more, beats it up even more, is the deceleration of when we land from that jumping position, the force that's pushing our foot up causes a bunch of eccentric contraction of this posterior tibialis muscle, kind of eats it up a bit. The number one cause of the reason why we get this shin splint, these, shin, these shin splints in here is because we're not stretching enough, we're not mobilizing this tissue enough. As it gets beat up, it gets taut, it gets tender, it needs to be mashed and stretched. So here's how we do it. We're going to take our lacrosse ball, go to our shin bone, come up here to the mid to upper third of the calf, come the shin, roll it down off the shin bone until we fall into that little gully. What we're going to do is, with moderate pressure, roll all the way down. Now, the shin symptoms generally happen most commonly in the distal one-third or the bottom one-third of the shin. So you'll kind of notice where that gully gets shallow. That's where we want to spend most of our time, and especially if we find any gnarly points, some really, really tight, tender points for that. That's me right there. Once we find that position, we're going to keep that moderate pressure down with our hand, and all we're going to do is flex and extend, flex and extend. You can see that we're using the lacrosse ball here because this is a part that's really hard to roll on itself. So what we're gonna try to do is course our way up and down several times, spending around two to four minutes. And if we find any of those gnarly points, again, mine's right there, I keep that pressure over top, flex, extend, flex, extend, do about 10 to 15 passes, and then find the next hot spot, flex, extend, flex, extend, as we course up and down spending our two to four minutes. Now, after we prepared the tissue, we mashed that muscle, now we need to stretch it. Here's how it's done. There's a whole bunch of different ways, but realize what we're trying to do is in a flexed knee position, we're trying to flex up the foot towards myself, or dorsiflex, and we're gonna try to push the foot out like such. One of the cool ways that I know how to do this on a chair, it doesn't necessarily have to be a chair, it could be on a box, I know you guys are in the boxes, so it could be on one of your jumping boxes. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna sit on that foot like if we were doing a soleus stretch. I'm gonna take my hand and pull up my toe like such. And if you notice, all I'm doing is pulling it to the outside and I'm letting that arch fall down and away. And I'm gonna twist my body and bring my knee in. Obviously, guys, Pay attention to the knee. If we have any knee problems, that's a contraindication to doing this type of stretch. But what we're trying to do is flex. If we were to go straight, just knee over top of our toe, we're going to get a lot of soleus here. For us to get the inside portion of the ankle, we need to rotate the knee inward while holding the toes and the foot outward. And that's going to allow us to stretch that inside portion and get the bottom tendon portion of the tibialis posterior. Guys, try that out. Spend two to four minutes mashing. Spend another two to four minutes stretching. That's your stretch and your mash. Mash and stretch. Until tomorrow, we're optimizing function to optimize performance.